after that message from Obama yesterday to black men, I had to pull up on Fox News and give him my thoughts. Joining me now is Xavier Durasso, a former BLM activist, and Anton Daniels, a YouTuber, content creator. Xavier, let's start with you. You say you were personally, after watching them, offended by Obama's comments? Absolutely. I mean, first of all, Obama's not as talented of a liar as he used to be. But quite frankly, my ancestors fought way too hard for me to have the ability to learn how to read, just for Obama to expect me to be so uneducated to think that I would vote for Kamala Harris simply because she claims to be a black woman. And I mean, if people want to stop having Kamala Harris be called a DEI hire, maybe he should stop trying to remind us of her demographic every five minutes. Black men not supporting Kamala has no nothing to do with her being a woman. It has everything to do with her lack of accomplishments over the last 1,359 days. Well, Anton, I'm watching this and I'm thinking to myself, it, it, the shtick is kind of worn thin with Obama, you know? How you doing, Pittsburgh? You know, that whole, it, it just seems very 2002 or three, I mean, 2008, I should say, right? It doesn't, it doesn't quite have the same appeal as mega star-ish as he is. You know, it's a Hail Mary pass considering that we did vote him in based off of identity politics. And I'm not saying that all is bad because he did do some things that I didn't necessarily disagree with that Trump absolutely did better than him. But at the same time, I felt that it was incredibly disrespectful because he's making the assumption that we're not educated enough to lead our families, to look at the policies, to understand exactly what's going on with immigration. And we're supposed to overlook everything that they did over the last three and a half years that was not in our favor. And when I say our, I'm talking about the American people, let alone men, let alone black men. And we're supposed to vote for her because of some misogynistic reason that's made up and instead, we've learned how to educate ourselves, and now they've sent their Messiah back to rein us in and bring us back into the Democratic plantation. And most men that I've Ooh. spoken with have said that it's absolutely disrespectful and we're done with Obama. Well, Xavier, again, when he says, you're lucky Michelle's not here, he does, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I mean, is, I guess it's supposed to be funny because she'll scold them in a more convincing or scarier fashion. It's kind of treating young uh, black men as children, almost like your children and mommy's coming back and mommy's going <laughs> to chastise you and you're going to get punished. But you're supposed to vote against your own economic interests to make Michelle and Barack happy in their four mansions. It's absolutely degrading. And black men are sick of being reduced to being expected to think with our skin color. We have seen how terrible the Obama, Biden, Harris trilogy has been for our country. It has completely demoralized our country. And quite frankly, Obama has no credibility because this is the same man who heavily endorsed Joe Biden. And we all can feel in our pockets and we can see it for sure at our border just how terrible the Biden Harris administration has been for our country. And Obama admitted himself back in an interview with Steve Colbert that if he could, he would run our country from an earpiece down in the basement. And it wouldn't surprise me if that's exactly what he's doing. <laughs> now, Xavier, um, I mean, excuse me, Anton, the media are really pushing Obama to be the you know rescue agent for Kamala's campaign. Watch this. Barack Obama, with joy and with humor, is able to sort of get through to an audience that it's not okay to lie. Mm -hmm. It's not okay to sell the presidency. It's not okay to be a narcissist and, and to have the reins of the presidency. Aunt Anton, uh, so, so Kamala's joy campaign isn't really working. So Obama's <laughs> going to come in. And again, you're supposed to make less money in real terms right. and be happy with it to make Obama and like MSNBC happy. I, I don't understand well, this argument. They took the same blueprint that got Obama elected, and he was a first for us, right? So our grandparents and our parents and things like that wanted to see this happen, but they were largely voting out of ignorance and voluntary ignorance because they only wanted that identity politics in order to push him through into the presidency. But admittedly, where he was charismatic, she isn't. And so we can see through her, she's a chameleon. When they unleashed her and they allowed for her to be able to take reporters' questions and things like that, 
it showed that she was completely incompetent. And frankly, not only do we feel disrespected, but I'm uncomfortable with Obama standing in front of us trying to scold us and then divert our attention away from the things that's really meaningful, especially for our families. I'm not comfortable with him. I don't want to hear any more messages of hope. I don't want to hear any more messages of joy. I can fill it with my pocketbooks. My friends can <laughs> fill it with their exactly. pocketbooks. And we're ready for him to get out of our way. I mean, Xavier, I, I saw something on YouTube. I think it was yesterday, or maybe it was, maybe it was Instagram. But it was a young man, African-American, and he was talking about uh, the price of food. And I think he was, he was at some fast food place. I can't remember what. I think it was, might have been McDonald's. But just the nuts and bolts, when you go through just what a Happy Meal costs, the differential in simple things that families like to treat themselves to, that's shocking. Like in, in Obama, you know, that doesn't affect him. It doesn't affect Hillary. It doesn't affect Trump. But Trump somehow has that ability to say, uh-uh, that's not acceptable in America. But they think Obama's charm is going to override daily life for people. The charm offensive from him, it's not 2008 any longer. I can't emphasize enough that being a young black voter, it feels like the Democrats are constantly trying to gaslight me about my own reality. I know how expensive food is. I know how expensive gas is. And I know how many illegal immigrants are running around in Los Angeles. We are sick and tired of being expected to feel good with Barack Obama, or now they're trying to put the ovarian version of Barack Obama up there and tell us that she is talented. She is absolutely not talented. And on behalf of black men, it's not that we're opposed to having a female president, because Miss Ingram, I would love to vote for you if you ever decide to run. <laughs> only if you guys are in my cabinet. That's the only way, only way I'm going to do it. Xavier and Anton, thanks for spending time with us on a Friday night. We appreciate it. Now, you know we're not going to let no politician, especially Obama, now that we got the hindsight to look at what it is that he accomplished for the other communities and for the alphabet communities and for people. You know we're not going to let Obama tell us what to do. Hey, man, he can miss me with that, personally. And as a matter of fact, all of these celebrities, they can miss me with their thoughts, especially when they're uninformed. When it doesn't align with what I believe is a respectful way to engage in dialogue, to have a conversation about who should be president of the United States of America. They basically discount us and acting like we're not intelligent enough or we're not educated enough and we're not successful enough to even think for ourselves or make an informed decision on who we should elect as president of the United States of America. Like I said before, I'd rather go that way. And when I say that way, I mean, <laughs> I'd rather go that way before I ever vote for Kamala Harris to be president of the United States of America. You can miss me with that. I don't care if Obama come out. I don't care about Magic Johnson, Ricky Smiley. I don't care about Steve Harvey, Charlemagne the God. I don't care about these aged out D.L. Hughley's. I don't care who are part of the boule. I don't care about none of these people. And you shouldn't either, because guess what? At the end of the day, what's best for your family is completely separate from their friendship with Kamala Harris. Don't care about it at all. And just because they're part of an organization, I don't respect their opinion, especially when they're trying to bully me and trying to act like I'm your son. Ain't nobody your son. Miss me with that, Obama. Ain't nobody hearing from you, bro.